because I'm not a monster. But I will not be beaten. <laughs> we will not be beaten. And Katie Hopkins has broken down over her disgusting cancellation by the Church of England, which has refused her performance at one of their venues. This is for her major new stand-up show, even though this same venue has hosted previously political events by the Extinction Rebellion crazies and drag queens. But for Katie, this was absolutely devastating given that she had sold 500 tickets to the event. And when she was trying to come to an arrangement with this particular organisation connected to the Church of England, they very much upset her. And you know, Katie is obviously usually seen in public as someone who has a tough exterior and has coped with cancellation, I think, much better than many people could, because let me tell you, I, I know a lot about this. It takes a massive psychological toll. This one really got to her and she broke down, watch. And they came back with, for the avoidance of doubt, these purported losses are vague, unsubstantiated and embarrassing. And that's the bit that's really got me, is that even when I said, all right, you know, I don't mind, or I do mind, but I don't mind, I, uh, you've cancelled me, could we refund people's travel and time and hotel and things? And, uh, and to be told you're those that that is vague it's 500 tickets but anyway vague unsubstantiated and embarrassing and i have to say you know i know the law is not the law i know there's no such thing as democracy right i know to question everything but there is still this sort sort of small part in your soul having spent so much time in america that hopes about a church you know i know archbishop of Canterbury will be such a disappointment. I see the church really, you know, throwing itself away. But I know people out there who have faith. And I say that your path's already set. You know, I have belief that my path is set. And now I have to believe that the church, in particular represented by here, has nothing to do with my kind of faith that you're... And Father Calvin Robertson has a disappointed member of the Church of England. How do you feel about that? It's gutting, isn't it? It's clearly an agenda, an ideological agenda. This is the problem with the Church of England. It's so left-wing, so liberal, they can't see past its own nose and see the fact that faithful masses may be meeting, or even just friendly people may be meeting in the Church that don't happen to be left-wing. Why make a deal with Katie Hopkins in the first place? You know who she is, you know what she stands for. She's very good at what she does but let her do her job. Don't cancel on her last minute and then refuse to help out refunding to all the people that are supposed to be traveling down to see the event. But the way they treated her is like she's less than a human being. The job of the church is to treat everyone like they are human beings. Every single human life is sacred and that we're all equal in the eyes of God in terms of dignity and worth. That's the message of the church. Also, yes, that we're all sinners, but we're, we are all included in God's plan. And we're all welcomed into his church. His church is for sinners, all of us. So to say that Katie Hopkins is not welcome, to say that she's less than a sinner, what does that mean about her? What is the church trying to say about Katie Hopkins? It's absolutely outrageous. They should be ashamed of themselves. But this is the Church of England, so I think shame is where they live. That's their normal kind of being at the, at the moment, unfortunately. And Calvin, you've spent some time with Katie recently ahead of the Uniting the Kingdom rally. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like her cancellation was unfair? And is there a chance for her to return to public life? Because it's so disturbing, Calvin, the way that she was debanked well before Farage. You know, she owns nothing. I mean, we can't accept, can we, someone being treated in this way? Not at all. We shouldn't accept it if we want a fair and equitable society. If we want equal opportunities for all, if we want a meritocracy where anyone can achieve as long as they work hard, get their head down and focus, then that's the world we should be able for. Then people like Katie Hopkins should have a chance. But to say, no, you're beyond the pale because you're a comedian that makes jokes that we see are not fit for purpose, that is tyranny 
of the worst sort. That's tyranny of the mind. That's saying you must think like we think, otherwise you are not welcome in civilized society. You know, to debank someone seems you're not able to contribute to, you're not able to make a living or provide for your family. It's dangerous. It's actually absolutely dangerous. It's the kind of things that the Stasi would do. You know, the commies would do this. The Nazis would do this. So to see it happening in liberal democracies or so-called liberal so-called democracies is astounding. Katie Hopkins has not actually said anything that bad or done anything that bad. Yes, she used to be quite controversial in her time on um, on Breakfast TV, but those days are long gone. She's now a very successful comedian who's producing very good content. And I say that as someone who doesn't generally find female comedians funny. Katie Hopkins is funny. <laughs> and so it's great to see you know, her work. So let's, let's appreciate it. Yeah, and what's she like, Calvin? She, I, I find her to be a lovely person who genuinely cares. So we had some conversations about this event, Uniting the Kingdom, which is, again, about uniting the people of Great Britain because we're so divided right now. And that's partly because of the establishment, partly because of our politicians, partly because of the mainstream media. But I've sat around the table with Katie and she, she, she's a listener. So she's not just rabbiting on about her own opinion. She's, she's taking on board what everyone else thinks too. And we all came to similar ideas about how we can bring people together around their Britishness, around their Christian values. She was very clear. Uh, we had lots of conversations about this, that Christianity is important for our country. She was very explicit about that. So her faith is important to her too. And so for the Church of England to say, no, actually, we don't see you as a Christian, is bonkers, because who is the Church of England to judge, especially these days? Mm, yeah. I mean, I've got a, I've got quite an interesting history with Katie because we were both columnists at the same time at The Sun and used to butt heads, actually. But... I've always had huge respect for her, even when she has said some quite horrendous things about me, especially during my time at GB News. And I respect the fact that she goes against the grain and she has deeply intellectual conversations. And also she is so smart, you know, she is so smart. And what I found absolutely fascinating about this deeply personal address to her followers is it was the first time really in a long time that she has expressed the really real personal side of what it's like to be cancelled and there's a really key line here I, I mean it's it, it's quite a lengthy clip but it's worth us both watching along Calvin where she says I'm not a monster and I will not be beaten watch so that has just been a lot you know and um, and the honesty of what I'm trying to do is I'm not just going out there doing stand up for the love of it. I'm doing it because I think it's important. I think it's needed. I know what it's like in those rooms and it's amazing. I also accept that I'll be punished for doing what I'm trying to do. And I accept that it doesn't mean I don't feel hurt and upset because I'm not a monster. But I will not be beaten. <laughs> we will not be beaten and um i just wanted to say thank you you know i can't say it too much because it will set me off again but first you know what's so important about being independent is i only ever tell you about products that i use and believe will really improve your life so that's why i am delighted today to talk about verso uh, so let me tell you about my story in regards to this product i entered my 40s decided to get very healthy after a stressful year exercising trying to sleep better all all of that type of stuff and doing the 16-8 fast as well but i researched and found that scientists like david sinclair have proven we can now reverse aging with interventions that go beyond healthy habits so i was looking for a product that i knew would enhance everything i was already doing but one that was backed up by really solid evidence that product is cell being by Verso. It's scientifically proven to include ingredients that fight the effects of aging by increasing NAD plus levels, which is the stuff that powers every cell in your body. I've been taking the product for a number of months at the start of my day. It's been genuinely transformative. Fasting is easier. I've lost fat. I'm eating less too. And the team at Verso tell me that it's due to its blood sugar regulation effects, which lead to fewer cravings. It's also really helped my sleep. Verso publishes th third-party testing from each batch produced, so you're guaranteed that you're getting exactly what you paid for, which is really important. And I'm delighted to say that because Verso is my first ever 
uh, sponsor here on Outspoken. The brilliant deal continues today. If you head right now to buy.ver.so forward slash Outspoken, you will save 15% on your first order. All you need to do is use the coupon code Outspoken where you check out. The link is in our show notes on YouTube and Rumble, so you can click directly from there. Or I'll spell it out for you, buy.ver.so forward slash Outspoken and use the coupon code Outspoken. I find her inspiring. I, I think people are really taken by her honesty because they know that she is completely unvarnished, completely unfiltered. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, Calvin, and no one wants to acknowledge this in the mainstream media, Katie Hopkins is way more powerful now than when she had a column in The Sun and a radio show on LBC. I promise you that. Some people won't believe that. But there was a brilliant article in the American mainstream media this week about Megyn Kelly. And about and I, she's obviously a, a friend of both of ours in America, cancelled in a very similar way, actually, to Katie Hopkins, maybe not quite so brutally. But now her show is more popular than virtually every mainstream media outlet in the US, and her voice has never been more heard. And I think the same thing is happening with Katie Hopkins. Maybe we're just a little bit behind the US, though. And I think it's insane that venues are still trying to cancel her. I mean, Megyn Kelly goes around and is, you know, about to give this uh, big performance with Tucker Carlson, and they find huge arenas. So, you know, I, I think there's hope. I, I guess that's what I'm saying. I think there's hope. I think Katie Hopkins is sort of uncancelled now, uh, but clearly not when it comes to the establishment. The thing is, what what the left often forgets is that we're all human beings, right? Even you know that, that idiot that threw whatever he threw at Nigel Farage, they just see us as the enemy. They see us as an opponent. They don't see us as human beings. Katie Hopkins, yeah, she may be tough. She may have been cancelled a hundred times, but this time it got to her because she's a person with feelings. If the left could only see people who don't think like them as equal to them in terms of dignity and wealth, if they uh, dignity and worth, if they could just see us as human beings and people with emotions, with cares, with loves, then they, we'd all be in a much better place. But the left do not seem to be able to do that because they can only see their own world, they can only see their own perspective, their own bubble. But I'm with you that there is hope. You know, Megyn Kelly, Joe Rogan, Tucker Carlson, these people are the most influential people in media now, and none of them are in the mainstream media. The, this is why the mainstream media is, continues to lash out, because it's afraid, and it resents what the independent media can do. You know, you are much more powerful and influential now that you've left good GBN because they are restricted. They have limits. I and mean, we just saw some of their, this is the first time actually I've seen any of the content in a long time. That show with Patrick Christie's was not a good show. There was no pushback, just a lot of nodding, but that's what he does. Anyway, the yeah, fact because he doesn't want to get in trouble because he saw what well, happened to afraid. me. Absolutely. And, and, and that's the problem. And they are completely controlled by the off communists. And what's really interesting, Calvin, I was very uh, taken, I think we've got it actually by one of your uh, posts on X about what's actually happening in terms of the censorship state. And you made the point, they go after X and Elon Musk, they arrest the CEO of Telegram, yet they go quiet when Meta, Facebook, Instagram is found to be enabling child sex abuse and trafficking. The establishment hunts down free speech advocates but turns a blind eye to pedos. And clearly, that's a very dramatic way to put it, but it's so hard to disagree with that when you see the way that there is lawfare now going on against both X and Telegram, and that's simply because the authorities do not control it, specifically the American authorities. 100%. I'm not a free speech absolutist, though I believe in free speech for the purposes of spreading the truth. What I want to see clamped down upon on social media is all of this child grooming, is all this child pornography, this paedophilia that is rampant, especially on Meta, that keeps getting reported you know, on Instagram and Facebook. I want to see it clamp down upon the people who actually incite violence. I want to see actual criminals, violent thugs, rapists, sex offenders, paedophiles locked up and or deported, if not hanged. I want to see severe punishments for the bad guys. What I want to see at the same time is a free space for people to discuss ideas whether they disagree with each other whether they offend each other or not that would be fantastic x provides that telegram has been providing that and this is why those two platforms are being clamped down upon because the people in charge cannot or will not for whatever reason address violent crime sex abuse and or pedophilia 
we can all allude to or speculate to why that might be, but I think a lot of it comes down to incompetence. Let's get back to facing real crime, you get tough on crime, and then stop locking down people for hurting words on Facebook and retweeting misinformation on Twitter, for goodness sake. Let's get some common sense back in the room. Absolutely, absolutely. And let's stop deplatforming people like Katie Hopkins, although actually all you're doing is making her more popular and making the people who follow her more angry than ever. Father Calvin Robinson, my goodness, we've covered it all today. Thank you so much, Calvin, and we will speak next week. God bless you, Dan. See you soon. Are you back in the UK, by the way? I am. I'm still in political exile, but I'm, I'm not seeing people where I am. I managed to make it over the border without a piece. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I've blown your cover. I'm blowing your cover. Calvin, thank, thank you so much. We'll speak next week. Thank you so much for watching Dan Wharton Outspoken. Please do subscribe if you want lots more clips and interviews like that. Plus, if you want to watch our totally uncensored after show, then visit www.outspoken.live.